Hi folks, Rusty with Sejocity Allstream Fabrication Engineering here with another episode in our basic tech series. You know, flow meters exist in every process facility on the planet. We're going to try to cover some of the basic flow technologies today so you have an understanding of what's used in industry. No matter what flow technology you eventually land on, you're going to need to know what type of flow measurement you need to accomplish. There are two basic types of flow measurement, volumetric flow rate and mass flow rate. Volumetric flow rate is simply the velocity times the density of the fluid moving through the pipe. Mass flow rate takes into account the change in density and usually mass flow meters will have some type of mechanism that accounts for the changes in density of the pipe. Volumetric flow rate is typically like cubic feet per minute or gallons per minute. Mass flow rate typically has units like pounds per hour or kilograms per minute. Where your density remains fairly constant, you'll probably end up using a volumetric flow meter. If you have a change in temperature or pressure that may affect the density, or you have multiple constituents in the stream, or a stream that may change composition, you'll probably want to use a mass flow meter that has some compensating device built into the meter so that you can compensate for that change in density. Now that we've covered volumetric and mass flow rate, let's talk a little bit about the different technologies that are available in industry today. We'll start with variable area flow meters. VA meters as they're known are typically known as rotometers in the industry. These are meters that are used for measuring gas and liquids, but most of the time you're not going to want high accuracy. Sparging systems, purge meters, and even if you've been in a hospital and seen oxygen flow meters, that's a type of rotometer. Variable area meters are comprised of a tube and a float. The tube inlet being narrow and at the exit being much wider. The tube can be glass or metal. The float can be just about any material of construction and can vary in size and shape. Depending upon the density of the fluid moving through the flow meter and the rate at which you need to measure, the float size and material of construction along with the taper of the tube can be changed to accommodate and calibrated to match the flow rate you want to measure. Typically where the float lands in that tube will give you an indicated flow rate. The next type of flow meter that we're going to discuss is mechanical flow meters. These include positive displacement meters like birotors and oval gears, also turbine meters, paddle meters, and vane type meters fall into this category. These are mechanical devices and we're typically counting the number of times the mechanism rotates in relation to the flow stream. Counting the number of pulses usually given off by that rotation is the way we calculate the velocity of the fluid moving through the stream. We now move to electromechanical flow meters. These include magnetic flow meters, Coriolis meters, thermal mass meters, and vortex shutters. These are either imposing an electrical signal or looking for an electrical current in the form of a frequency or voltage from the flow stream itself. We use that current or frequency to calculate the velocity of the fluid moving through the pipe. We move now to one of the most common flow meters used in industry, especially for volumetric flows, and that's differential pressure flow elements. The most common of these that you've probably seen in industry includes the orifice plate, but we also talk about venturis, wedge meters, torus meters, anything that creates a differential pressure in the pipe. We use the square root of that differential pressure to calculate the velocity of the fluid moving through the pipe. Differential pressure flow elements are predominant in industry in everything from low flow rates in liquids all the way through very high flow rates, 60 to even 72 inch pipes in natural gas flows. Finally, we cover transit time flow meters. Transit time meters and Doppler meters are typically using a frequency imposed on the flow stream itself and calculate the change in that frequency shift or the time it takes for that frequency to travel from one transducer to another as the way to calculate the velocity in the pipe. Those are your basic type of flow meters used in industry today. As you can tell from the list, there are a myriad of technologies used in industry and we're not even going over a comprehensive list. There's just not enough time in this video to do that. So how do you know which flow meter to use and what's best for your application? 
Well, let's try to go over some basics in this video to kind of get you started. First, let's talk about differential pressure flow elements. DP meters, differential pressure meters, are typically used throughout industry because of their ease of installation and they're very well known. Differential pressure elements have been used in industry for hundreds of years. In fact, the first differential pressure flow meters were characterized and standardized way back in the 1940s for industry. And standards have been written around those types of meters in industry for just about every application you can imagine. Differential pressure meters like orifice plates, venturis, wedge meters are all very well characterized and understood. And typically, because they're used so widely in industry, the price is about right too. Orifice plates are typically very inexpensive and are well known. If you have a very consistent flow rate density-wise in a differential pressure application, an orifice plate's probably a really good choice. Venturis give you a little bit wider turndown ratio or range, and wedge meters even expand upon that further. Variable area meters or rotometers are used in industry as well, typically as site flow meters for non-critical applications. Purge meters, sparging meters, applications that don't require high accuracy or an output. Variable meters are also very well known and understood and have been used in industry for decades. The next flow meter we're going to talk about is the electromechanical. Electromechanical meters are typically new in regards to industry, but still have quite a few standards written around them. Faraday's law when it comes to magnetic flow meters are very well understood. Vortex shedding meters are very well characterized. And in applications requiring some type of density calculation or density correction, Coriolis meters have become quite popular in the last 30 or 40 years. In fact, Coriolis meters are one of the best understood, newest technologies in industry today. We move on to mechanical flow devices. Turbine meters, vane meters, positive displacement meters like oval gears, by rotors. These are all mechanical devices used to measure flow. Usually the reciprocation of the mechanical device has a magnetic field attached to it and we count the number of pulses that magnetic field generates as those mechanical devices inside of the flow meter rotate. In the case of a turbine meter, it's the turbine blade. In the case of an oval gear meter, it's the oval gears that are located inside of the meter. These meters have typically been used in liquid hydrocarbons applications uh, because of the lubrosity of the hydrocarbons itself and the fact that these devices typically are long-lived in those type of streams. Mechanical devices are also very well characterized, especially positive displacement meters. They can provide really high accuracy in applications that keep a consistent density or keep a consistent product. Loading racks, for example, use positive displacement meters widely. Vortex shutters are used in applications all across industry where hydrocarbons or light hydrocarbons are being flowed through the pipe and even can be calibrated in such a way to compensate for shifts in density of the product moving through the pipe. The final category we discuss are transit time and Doppler flow meters. These devices have been used in industry and especially during the onset of the microprocessor age have been widely used because the microprocessors have allowed them to become more accurate and faster. Transducer technology, the transducers used to either impose a frequency or to measure the frequency in the pipe, that technology has gotten better as well. In applications where you want a non-invasive type of flow measurement where the transducers can be attached to the outside of the pipe and don't require any intrusion into the pipe, these devices have become quite popular. Doppler meters have to have slurries or particulates or even air bubbles inside of the flow stream in order to effectively measure, whereas transit time or ultrasonic devices require the stream to be fairly clean. That's the difference between those two technologies and why you would choose one over the other. As you can see, this short video doesn't even begin to scratch the surface on all the different technologies that are available out there today. If you're using flow meters, please let us know what type of technology you're using and let us know where your applications had the most success. And if you've had to change flow meters for any reason from one technology to another, that information would be helpful as well to our viewers. This is Rusty with Sagacity All Stream Fabrication Engineering thanking you for viewing another episode. 
If this has been helpful to you, be sure and like and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching.